Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the course Management Information Systems. Today we're going to start off with the new chapter, that is chapter 14, about the design and implementation of the systems development cycle. Right, in last lecture May, we were talking about the first initial two phases of the system development. Just we have seen that investigation and analysis. So, um, as you look at the uh, system development cycle, which we a traditional cycle, ki baat ki thi, then it had the five phases. Just me investigation, tha, analysis, tha, design, implementation, as well as maintenance. Now, basically, either system development cycle, either it's the traditional one, or it's the prototype, or it's RAD, or JAD, or Joby technique use kar hai for developing the system, your information system, then whatever uh, method you're using or whatever whatever cycle that you're using basic usme jo phases hain wo yahi honge that you start off first you start off with the planning then you move on to the investigation then analysis of the systems and then design and implementation and then in the end maintenance aa jati hai so it doesn't matter ki aap kaun sa uh, uh, jo development cycle use kar rahe hain development technique use kar rahe hain lekin unke uh, almost to a uh, pattern banta of the phases of the different steps that uh, the development team takes is pretty much the same that's why hum jab dekhte hain ek uh, complete uh, cycle ko then we basically study the traditional one because all the other ones are sort of um, a manipulation of the traditional uh, development cy life cycle right ji, last lecture mein when we were uh, doing this then humne shuru kiya tha ki aapka jo system development hai wo basically shuru kahan se hota hai then uh, what initiates your system development what are the reasons for which ki aapke jo ek system development cycle hai wo shuru hota hai that could be that there is any problem with the existing system that could be that the organization wants to achieve some kind of competitive advantage or wants to compete or it could be that uh, they want to uh, embed new technology in their systems yeah, or different tarah ke, uh, initiations ho sakti hai, and they start from any level of the organization anybody uh, who can detect a problem or anybody who wants that the system needs some kind of improvement he or she can basically if he is uh, either a manager or an employer or top manager he or she can uh, initiate the system development cycle that jo bhi hai problem wo define karke and he or she can say ke ye wala problem that needs to be solved right ji while discussing that humne kaha ke aapke jo uh, system development team hoti hai basically it's uh, because we uh, deal with the system development as a project that means it has a project manager right ji aapka jo sara project team jo hai system development team hai usme project manager hai uske alawa whole development team consists of the system analyst as well that we said is a very key person iske alawa uske sath programmers kaam kar rahe hote hain and there is an input from the users and stakeholders as well right then we moved on towards the planning that once uh, uh, the system development has been initiated then we say how do we plan for the system development which is pretty much like project planning that is ke aapke jo uh, system development ke goals hone chahiye that should be in line with the goals of the organization that should be aligned with the goals of the organization so if the goal of the organization is to achieve the competitive advantage information system must provide certain functionalities that come up to that expectation so either it, it is achieved through any kind of creative analysis or critical analysis jo bhi analysis kar rahe hain system ko improve karne ke liye either you bringing in innovative methods or you're critically analyzing the existing business processes or the existing system that why is everything being done the way it's being done so with that there are new ways and new methods to improve the uh, information system so that it achieves the competitive advantage for the organization iske uh, we talked about the different objectives that the um, information system has to achieve if he has to come up to a certain goal. So either it is me measured in the form of performance objectives or it is the uh, cost objectives. Performance objectives there means that your system is working extent pe kaam kar rahe, they're, they're, uh, uski jo performance measure ho rahi hai, to jo objective set kya hua hai us uh, information system ke, uh, liye, it should come up to that expectation again. 
again cost objectives we set kiya ja sakte hain for the information system that it has to reduce a certain cost development cost itni aani chahiye etc etc now afterwards when the development team has planned for the information system development then comes the इन्वेस्टिगेशन फेज इन्वेस्टिगेशन फेज बेसिकली क्या है उसके अंदर सारे जो सिस्टम प्रपोजल हैं वो पेश किए जाते हैं सो बेसिकली इट्स सिस्टम रिक्वेस्ट फॉर्म दैट इज फिल्ड बाय एनी बडी ही वॉन्ट्स टू इनिशियट द प्रोजेक्ट डेवलपमेंट जिसमें प्रॉब्लम स्टेट किया जाता है जो प्रपोज सोल्यूशन है वो स्टेट किया जाता है अज्यूम्ड कॉस्ट वगैरह थोड़ी बहुत स्टडी करके पेश की जाती है दैट द सिस्टम शुड बी अचीविंग दैन दिस इज वट द न्यू सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू अचीव so when there are different proposals on the table then the investigation uh, start, takes place that is basically going to evaluate the feasibility of each project that if this is the project that needs to be done to uski feasibility kya hai either it is something that can be done or not or it can be moved forward or not feasibility analysis means that uski technical feasibility check hoti hai economic feasibility check hoti hai लीगल फिजिबिलिटी चेक होती है ऑपरेशनल फिजिबिलिटी चेक होती है एज वेल एज द स्केजल एज वेल सो द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्ट नैट नीड्स टू बी अवेल्युएटेड बिफोर द स्टेयरिंग कमेटी कैन से येस टू अ सर्टन प्रोजेक्ट देन आफ्टर वर्ड्स वेन द फिजिबिलिटी रिपोर्ट हैज बीन जनरेटेड एंड स्टेयरिंग कमेटी अगेन डिसाइड दैट ओके दिस सीम्स लाइक अ प्रायरिटी प्रोजेक्ट इन दिस सीम्स लाइक समथिंग दैट इज फिजिबल टू बी डन देन uh development team enters the analysis phase analysis phase basically kya hai it figures out what the information system needs to do to solve that certain problem now to what ki baat aa jati hai that means that before they uh go into uh, how the information system will be solving the problem they go back again into the problem again to understand the problem better so basically aapka jo analysis phase hai it figures out the problem behind the problem what is exact problem and then it figures out the existing system ki weaknesses or strengths kya thi what are the user requirements and then it uh, gives different solutions to the problems and it also uh, analyzes the feasibility of the different solutions so basically your analysis phase of the system development cycle has two categories first is data collection and next is data analysis so data collection means that they are getting the user requirements they are getting the user input and they are also trying to understand how the existing system is working either they directly asking questions they are uh, sending in the questionnaires or they doing certain interviews or they are uh, observing the system themselves so the various methods of doing so again when they come to data analysis why is data analysis being done because so like i said before that data jo hai aapka wo meaningful form mein nahi hota unless and until you give a meaning to it you sort of graphically uh, draw something you graphically analyze karenge kisi cheez ko tab bhi aapke liye wo data ek meaningful uh, importance rakhega aur tab bhi wo information banega so that's why when every, uh, when the development team has gathered the data they sort of uh create different kinds of er diagrams they create uh, data flow diagrams they create flow charts why to better understand how the elements are working in this existing system also these diagrams again can be used for giving different solutions of the problem as well so once this has been done a system analysis report is this disco system proposal we at times kehte hain वो चीज क्रिएट हो जाती है दैट लिस्ट द वीकनेसेस एंड स्ट्रेंथ्स ऑफ द न्यू ऑफ द एक्जिस्टिंग सिस्टम इट गिव्स द यूजर रिक्वायरमेंट्स एज वेल एज डिफरेंट सॉल्यूशंस टू द टू सॉल्व दैट सर्टेन प्रॉब्लम इज वेल एंड देन अगेन दैट इज अगेन गिवन ऑफ टू द स्टेयरिंग कमेटी व्हिच देन डिसाइड्स दैट ओके दिस दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम एंड दिस इज द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ सॉल्यूशंस देन इट एंटर्स द डिजाइन फेज जो भी एक सोल्यूशन सेलेक्ट करके उसको डिजाइन फेज में लेके जाते हैं नाउ सो दिस इज वेयर आर नेक्स्ट चैप्टर कम्स इन फ्रॉम दैट इज डिजाइन एंड इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इसमें करेंगे क्या हम वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सिस्टम डिजाइन एंड डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन द लॉजिकल एंड फिजिकल डिजाइन वी गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब द कंसिडरेशन इन इंटरफेस डिजाइन एंड सिस्टम सिक्योरिटी डिजाइन विच आर अगेन टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द डिजाइन then we going to describe different techniques for system selection evaluation how the system is selected how is the design selected and also how are the vendor selected then in the next lecture we going to talk about the implementation and maintenance in today's lecture we only going to concentrate on the design of the system development cycle right ji 
پرپرس آف دی سسٹم ڈیزائن اگین جب ہم نے انالیسز کی بات کی تھی وہ سیڈ اس کا جو پرپرس تھا دیا وز وٹ ول دی انفرمیشن سسٹم ڈو ٹو سالو دی سرٹن پرابلم ڈیزائن از آل اباؤٹ ہاؤ ول دی انفرمیشن سسٹم گو ان ٹو سالو دیٹ پرابلم دیٹ وٹ سے اب ہم آ گئے ہیں ایگزیکٹلی ہاؤ از اٹ گو ان ٹو ڈو دیٹ سو وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دس ہاؤ دین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ ڈفرینٹ ایلیمنٹس دیٹ آر گوئنگ ٹو بی پارٹ آف دا ڈفرینٹ کمپوننٹس دیٹ آر گوئنگ ٹو بی پارٹ آف دا سسٹم اینڈ ہاؤ دیز کمپوننٹس گوئنگ ٹو بی انٹریکٹنگ ود ایچ ادر اینڈ ہاؤ دیز کمپوننٹس آر آر سارٹ آف ریلیٹڈ ود ایچ ادر سو دس بیسیکلی میکس اپ دا ٹیکنیکل ڈیزائن ان ادر ورڈس دیٹ مینس اٹ ڈیٹیلس دا سسٹم آؤٹ پٹس دا ان پٹس دا یوزر انٹرفیسز دا ہارڈ ویئر سافٹ ویئر دا ڈیٹا بیسز and telecommunications as well as their relation between them. Along with that, how their, the various procedures are going to work with these components as well. So your system design is, at one step, it is about how, how these uh, different components are working and it is also about what are the characteristics of these components and how are they related with one another and how are they interacting with one another as well. So basically, Apka, جو ایک ڈیزائن بنتا ہے یا ٹیکنیکل ڈیزائن بنتا ہے اس کا بیسک جو پرپز ہے دیٹ از یو آر ڈیزائن دا نیو سسٹم نمبر ون از ٹو ریموو دا پرابلمس آف دا ایگزٹنگ سسٹم اینڈ نمبر ٹو از دیٹ یو آر میٹنگ دا آرگنائزیشنل گولس اور یو آر اچیونگ دا آرگنائزیشنل گولس سو یو ناٹ اونلی ریموونگ دا شارٹ کمنگس آف دیٹ اوریجنل ایگزٹنگ سسٹم بٹ یو آر آلسو گیونگ اے کائنڈ آف اے ڈیزائن دیٹ از going to meet those organizational goals as well. Right, Ji? The system design basically has two kinds of uh, categories. Again, like I said, ke ek, uh, taraf design mein functionality define hoi ho rahi hai, dousi taraf characteristics define ho rahi So, this is what the logical and physical design do. Logical design basically is uh, describing what the system will do. So, it describes the functional requirements of the system. That is ke output, input, process, file, database, telecommunication, procedures, security, personnel, people, and the job requirements. How, what, how are these uh, components working in that uh, uh, information system? And why do they do that? So this is the first step in the design procedure. So why do they define the logical design first? Uh, apart from considering that which kind of hardware use will be used, which kind of software will be used, which kind of database will be used, so that your design is not restricted by the use of any kind of uh, physical uh, device. So that, one side, when you have functional requirements, then you move on to the fact that the hardware is used, which kind of use is used, or the software is used, or which kind of use is used. First, the system is, uh, the design is going to give the functional requirements of the whole system. And plans ke the different various components kaam kar rahe hain, the input kaam kar rahe hain, file jo hai, database mein, wo kis tarah relate ho rahe hain, wo kis tarah kaam kar rahe hain. So, the next uh, step that comes in the design is the physical design. Physical design is basically how these tasks are accomplished by different devices. So, اس میں آ جاتا ہے it specifies the characteristics of the uh, system's components necessary to put that logical design into action. So basically it gives the characteristics of what kind of hardware is going to be used to achieve that functional requirement or what kind of database is to be used to achieve that functional requirement that is mentioned in a logical design. Again, procedure کون سا ہوگا اس کے کیا characteristics ہوں گے and etc etc so this kind of thing this is all based on the technology and this is all based on the technology which we have studied in detail about the different kinds of hardware and software we did in that module 2 which we talked about IT infrastructure so basically physical design is all about the characteristics of that IT infrastructure that is being used now the next step that is the object oriented design which is the OO design so either you are designing the logical design or the physical design so you can do it either in a traditional method or you can use a technique called the object oriented design so object oriented design approach basically has the benefit of modular approach or it's called flexibility we call it what is it that the key objects and their classes are designed while considering the different uh, three categories that is the problem domain, the operating environment, 
and the user interface. Problem domain means that uh, the classes of the objects that are used in the problem solving. Now, an example we have seen, so then you will understand. Operating environment again, the technical environment in which these uh, classes or the objects work, and user interface again, which the user is interacting with the system, interact kar hai, that is with the help of the user interface. Object orient, uh, oriented design, mein, we can also design the sequence of the events. That means sequence of the events means that konsa jo activity ko pehle aari hai, konsi activity baad mein aari hai. So, is saare cheez ko scenario bolte hai. So, so, scenario designing can be done with the help of a sequence diagram. So, here is an example of a sequence diagram. This may, as you can see here, this kayak item, jo likha hua yahan pe, this is the problem domain. That means it's a class of an object that is being used for some kind of a problem solving or some kind of an action that is to be part of the new system. Here this rental clerk is the user that is going to be interacting with that object. Now all these uh, arrows as you can see either it's going there or going there. This is basically defining the sequence. Okay, this sequence may this system is going to get the ID of the person. Next step may the uh, person uh, he is going to give the ID to that uh, system. Then he is going to get the purchase date from that uh, person. The next step he is going to give that purchase date to that uh, system. So it's all about one by one sequence that uh, system user ke saath kis interact kar hai or the user jo hai wo system ke saath interact kis basis ke par kar hai. So this is just one example of how one object is communicating with that other uh, user. So this basically is a small example of a sequence diagram, step by step procedure of what is uh, happening in the system. Either the system is uh, either uh, interacting with other components of the system or the system is interacting with the user. Right, so whenever you are designing for the new system, like I said, there are two very important factors that need to be considered. Number one is the interface design. Because it's also very important that when the user is going to interact with the system, then uske kaun kaun se components honge jiske saad user interact kar rahe. So this also becomes a major part of the system design. Also, the other important category of the system design now has become the security because security issues again bahut zyada ho jate hain. That's why designs need to be in such a way so that they reduce the security uh, breaches and security errors. Right, ji. interface design mein to special system characteristics aate hain. This is number one, the sign-in procedures, the interactive procedures as well as the interactive design or interactive dialogue. So, so basically three uh, basic categories of, hain of the system design. Sign-in procedure is basically all about identification, uh, verification and authorization. That is the sign-in procedure may the person uh, the sign-in procedure can be designed for giving uh, access to certain kind of computer resources. So, jahan bhi sign-in procedure are at, this needs to be designed in the system design as well. For example, you are logging on to, this ko log on, we bolte hai, logging on to a certain email program, you are logging on to any kind of website, to uska sign-in procedure be designed kiya jayega, just may uh, email ID di jayegi ya koi aur kisim ki identification di jayegi, password liya jayega and then all of this is going to be verified and then afterwards uh, verification ho ke authorize kiya jayega us person ko that he can either start using the email program or start using that website. So, the next one is interactive procedures. Interactive procedure means that people directly interact with the processing components of the system. Right? This is a menu driven system that means the uh, menus do hai, to if a person is interacting with a website and there are menus in the website then again these basically give the person the access to go directly to a certain menu. So either this interactive procedures can be done through the menu driven system or with the help of help facility. Help facility be a function that can be provided so that the, if the people want to know about a certain program or certain feature, then they can activate the help facility. Lookup table means that uh, it provides simplicity and for shortening the data entry. For example, abbreviations like that, 
اگر کوئی کمپنی فگر آؤٹ کرنی ہو ان دا فارم دین دا پیپل کین سمپلی رائٹ دا ایبریویشن سو دا سسٹم کین ہیو لک ہیو لک ایٹ دا لک اپ ٹیبل دیٹ از ورکنگ ایٹ دا بیک اینڈ ٹو فگر آؤٹ کے اس ایبریویشن سے ریلیٹڈ جو کمپنی ہے وہ کون سی ہے سو اگین دس از اگین ٹو ہیلپ دا یوزر اینڈ شارٹن دا ٹائم فار دا ڈیٹا انٹری اگین وی اسٹارٹ پروسیجرز بھی اویلیبل ہوتے ہیں سو دیٹ اف اینی کائنڈ آف اپلیکیشن اسٹاپس اور ابوٹس ان دا مڈل آف سم تھنگ دین دیر از اے ری اسٹارٹ پروسیجر ٹو ری اسٹارٹ دا اپلیکیشن رائٹ سو دیز آر جسٹ سمپل انٹریکٹو پروسیجرس جو کہ جب آپ انٹرفیس ڈیزائننگ کرتے ہیں دین دیز نیڈ ٹو بی انکلوڈیڈ ان دیٹ ڈیزائن از ویل بیکاز اٹس آل اباؤٹ کہ یوزر نے جب انٹریکٹ کرنا ہے اٹس آل اباؤٹ گوئنگ ٹو ہیلپ دا یوزر اینڈ آلسو گوئنگ ٹو سو جو بھی یہ والی چیزیں ہیں دیز آر بیسیکلی گوئنگ ٹو ہیلپ دا یوزر یوز دیٹ سسٹم اور یوز دیٹ ویب سائٹ ایکسیٹرا یا جو بھی آپ کریٹ کر رہے ہیں رائٹ دا تھرڈ پوائنٹ واز انٹریکٹو ڈیزائن اینڈ ڈائلاگ ناؤ گڈ انٹریکٹو ڈیزائن اینڈ ڈائلاگ مینس کہ اٹ ہیز اے سیریز آف میسیجز اینڈ پرامپس دیٹ آر کمیونیکیٹڈ بٹوین دا سسٹم اینڈ دا یوزر فار ایگزامپل اگر کوئی ایرر آ رہا ہے دین دا سسٹم نیڈس ٹو پرامپٹ اینڈ سینڈ میسیج ٹو دا یوزر دیٹ دس جو آپ نے انٹر کیا ہے ڈیٹا دیٹ از ناٹ کریکٹ یو نیڈ ٹو ری رائٹ رائٹ اٹ اگین فار ایگزامپل اور اٹ کوڈ بی سچ دیٹ یو آر سیونگ سم ڈاکیومنٹ یو آر سیونگ سم فائل دین دا سسٹم پرامپس یو اگین آر یو شیور یو وانٹ ٹو سیو اٹ اور آر یو شیور یو وانٹ ٹو ڈیلیٹ اٹ سو دیز آر دا کائنڈ آف میسیج اینڈ پرامپس دیٹ کین ہیپن بٹوین دا یوزر اینڈ دا سسٹم اب ان میسیجز اور پرامپس کا دو تین کریکٹرسٹکس ہیں دیر آر ویری امپورٹنٹ نمبر ون از واٹ ایو از ریٹن ان دا میسیج اور دا پرامپٹ نیڈس ٹو بی کلیئر سو دیر از این آسپیکٹ دیر شوڈ بی این آسپیکٹ آف کلیئرٹی ان دوز میسیجز ایمبیگوس نہیں ہونا چاہیے ویگ نہیں ہونا چاہیے دیٹ جو کوشچن سسٹم یوزر سے پوچھ رہا ہے وہ یوزر کو سمجھ نہیں آ رہی ہے کس قسم کا کوشچن ہے نیکسٹ پوائنٹ از کنسسٹنسی دیٹ جو لینگویج یوز کی جا رہی ہے جو بھی فارمیٹ یوز کیا جا رہا ہے ایک ان دا سیم انفارمیشن سسٹم دٹ ہیز ٹو بی کنسسٹنٹ تھرو آؤٹ دا سسٹمس دین اگین فارمیٹ فارمیٹ شوڈ بی سچ دیٹ اٹ شوڈ بی ایزیئر ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اینڈ ایزیئر ٹو سی دا کلر کامبینیشن بہت ایک دم برائٹ نہیں ہونی چاہیے سو دیٹ دا پرسن از سوٹ آف لیفٹ ونڈرنگ کہ یہ کیا ہو رہا ہے اسکرین پہ اینڈ دین دا ویری امپورٹنٹ تھنگ از جارگن اینڈ رسپیکٹ جارگن مینس دیٹ دا ورڈس دیٹ آر بینگ یوز ان دیٹ میسیج اور پرامپٹ نیڈ ٹو بی ایزیئر اینڈ سمپلر ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ مشکل ورڈس نہیں یوز کرنے چاہیے سو دیٹ ایوری کائنڈ آف یوزر کین انڈرسٹینڈ واٹ از ریٹن اینڈ دا لاسٹ ایسپیکٹ از رسپیکٹ دیٹ از دا سسٹم شوڈ آسک ان سچ اے وے کہ وہ رسپیکٹ کر رہا ہے یوزر کی جو جو بھی سسٹم ڈیزائن میں جو بھی پروگرامرس یا جو بھی سسٹم انالسٹ دے آر ڈیزائننگ دا سسٹم سسٹم ان سچ اے وے کہ وہ ایک تو جارگن یوز نہ کریں ٹیکنیکل ٹرمس زیادہ یوز نہ کریں سمپلر ٹرمس میں یوزر سے کوشچن پوچھیں اینڈ آلسو دے شوڈ آسک ان سچ اے وے سو دیٹ اٹ از رسپیکٹ فل اینڈ ناٹ ان اے ویری روڈ مینر رائٹ جی سو گڈ انٹریکٹو ڈیزائن اور ڈائلاگ کے یہ تھوڑے سے بیسک فیکٹرز ہیں دیٹ نیڈ ٹو بی کیپٹ ان مائنڈ وین ایور دا سسٹم اینالسٹ یا پروگرامرس آر ڈیزائننگ اے سسٹم رائٹ جی نیکسٹ وی کم ٹو دا پوائنٹ آف سو ہیئر ایز یو کین سی از سمپل سائن ان پروسیجر کے اسٹیپس ہیں نمبر ون از آر انٹریفیکیشن وین یو ٹیک ان دا پاس ورڈ اینڈ دا آئی ڈی آف دا یوزر دین کمس دا ویریفیکیشن پروسیس جس میں آئی ڈی اور یوزر چیک کیا جاتا ہے ود آلریڈی اسٹور آئی ڈی اینڈ یوزر آئی ڈی یا پاس ورڈ سو دیٹ آئیدر آتھورائزیشن کین بی گیون ٹو دا پرسن اور ناٹ ہاں جی نیکسٹ وی کم ٹو دا سسٹم سیکیورٹی ڈیزائن کنسیڈریشن سو بیسیکلی دا سسٹم ڈیولپمنٹ ٹیم شوڈ ڈیزائن فار دا سیکیورٹی آف دا سسٹم ایز ویل سو ان فیکٹ آل aspects of the uh, system which also would include all the IT components for example hardware security software security database security telecommunications and networking security so they, the uh, system development team needs to design for all of these aspects number one point in the system security design is preventing detecting and correcting errors so basically this, the design should be in such a way that 
it is going to prevent the errors before they occur. That means the systems are designed in such a way that they prevent error. Kis tarah ho sakta hai? For example, again, jo mein thoi de pehle example di thi that when a person is writing something, data entry form mein kuch fill ho raha hai and there is a data entry going on then the system should be designed in such a way that it prompts the user whenever the user enters something wrong. Ya phir, correcting errors, automatic correcting bhi design ki ja sakti hai. For example, اگر ایک if there is a date entry and the person has entered the date in a wrong format again that format can be corrected automatically so these are certain mechanisms that can be designed to sort of prevent the errors if they occur detect the errors if they are occurring again and correcting the errors اگر تو user کو وہ prompt نہیں کر رہا کہ the user یا پھر کوئی اس قسم کا data entry ہے that the it can be uh, automatically corrected, then they should design this uh, feature as well. And one measure of you, uh, doing that is the enterprise rights management procedure. So there are different techniques and tools available for uh, data correcting as well as um, error correcting as well. In this case, if there, there are dif uh, different uh, database management systems that also provide this functionality of uh, correcting the data entry errors. Right, the next point is the disaster uh, recovery and planning. When we talk about the disaster planning, basically, it means that you are anticipating that a certain kind of disaster might happen, and you're also planning that if it happens, then these are the security measures for it, or this are, or these are the uh, recovery measures for it. So. Basically, disaster planning is all about anticipating. Anticipating means that you are foreseeing, you are understanding or you are thinking that this kind of disaster might occur. Now, disaster is what kind of it can be? Natural disaster, floods, earthquakes, or there could be any kind of political unrest or labor problems. So, there can be various kind of problems control nahi ho sakta in other way. So the systems need to be designed in such a way that they incorporate this kind of disaster planning as well. So basic focus of this disaster planning is to maintain the integrity of the corporate information. Whatever information is stored in the mm, databases or the system, then you need to maintain the integrity of that information and also keep the information systems running until a normal running environment on key wapas ni ajati or create ni ajati. So emergency basis ki upad they need to have certain setups that keep that information systems running so that aapka jo business se wo effect na ho. Disaster recovery simply means that you are implementing those disaster recovery plans into action. Jo bhi planning hui hui hai usko aap implement kar rahe hai that is called disaster recovery. Now, uh, uh, so basically most of these recovery uh, planning and procedures concentrate on the IT backup. Business process recovery planning bhi hoti hai, but most of them uh, basically uh, concentrate on uh, IT backup. That means ke IT infrastructure jo hai, hardware, software, databases hai, uh, the network system hai, uske backup ke liye uh, ki jati hai, so that if any kind of uh, problem occurs, these systems can be able to run again. Number one is hot site and number two is cold site. Hot site means that if there is any hardware that is currently being used, then you keep a duplicate of the same hardware and so that you can, and it is in such a state that it is ready to use. So that if some problem occurs, then that software will put it in the hardware and work on it. اس کے علاوہ if there is a problem with the site for example جہاں پہ وہ hardware پڑا ہوا ہے اور اس جگہ کو کوئی نقصان ہو سکتا ہے then that means that you move that hardware to the cold site cold site means room یا electrical equipment required جو ہو رہی ہے یا networking abilities جو required ہے you are duplicating that somewhere else so you are simply moving that hardware equipment to a new site this is called cold site both them this can allow the very important thing that needs to be backup is the database because all of the information is also present 
obviously present in the database. That's why database backups are very crucial for uh, to be saved. Now, database backup, again, techniques there are different uh, database management systems that also provide uh, the database uh, backup techniques just make incremental backup uh, image logs create out there. What do they do? They all basically are there to recreate the database. So, where Jaham became fault are us point se leke pehle point tak they have that database image uh, saved so that they can recreate the database all over again. Right, so next we have the systems control. System control here means that if there's any kind of security breach, fraud, ya uh, piracy problems aajate hain ya privacy problems aajate hain then uh, these controls uh, need also be also to be designed so that they can prevent and detect any kind of security breaches or any kind of frauds that can happen so that's why it's also important ki jab a uh, system new system design kar rahe hain you also foresee that a certain problem can occur and you plan to control that kind of problem so close shops uh, uh, information systems department is co control kistra kar sakte hain either through close shops means that the information system department hai uh, only very selective or operators are allowed to use the systems open shops means that the uh, different kinds of system analysts and different programmers are also authorized to use that uh, uh, systems in the information system department deterrence control here means that you are foreseeing that certain kind of fraud can happen or uh, and you are preventing ways for any kind of problem or any kind of security breach to happen so again it's all about designing in such a way ke aapke jo different uh, problems create ho rahe hain uh, related to security to unko aap counter kar rahe hain in the design of the information system as well so that your computers are more secure so these kind of controls help prevent any kind of computer misuse or crime or fra fraud by any kind of other users either they their employees or if there's somebody else coming in the company and uh, uh, sabotaging the system right so so far we have talked about uh, the different uh, design issues in uh, the information system design just me humne pehle define kiya logical design kya hota physical design again it's all about the characteristics of the it uh, being used in the information system then we talked about the two very basic categories uh, that need to be considered while designing ek to aapka simple design and function, uh, functional requirements hain ki aapke jo system components hain wo kis tarah interact kar rahe hain iske alawa apart from how the system components are uh, acting and how your uh, system is going to be working the two important factors are the user interface that is how the users are going to interact with the system and also how you're going to design in such a way that you're going to make the system secure and uh, for any kind of problems either they are natural or they are done by users deliberately so the systems need to be designed to prevent and detect as well as control these disasters right now that uh, up till now we have uh, sort of uh, designed the uh, functional requirements of the new system that the system is going to do that and aapne thodi bol ki hardware software specifications bhi bata diye hain that these are the kind of hardware that are required these are kind of software that are required so now uh, if the organization is going to implement a new kind of information system and uske requirements hain ke usme kuch is kisam ki functionalities and that cannot be done by the uh, uh, hardware software of the uh, existing system that then that means that new hardware and software needs to be acquired according to the system requirements and this can be done either acquiring the uh, uh, systems from either uh, a single vendor or the or the multiple vendor matlab ke ek company se aap lenge cheeze ya phir multiple company se lenge that again depends on the requirements of the company vendor choose karne ka kya matlab hai that jo bhi aap equipment le rahe hain kisi aur company se to aapne us company ke bare mein kya dekhna hai number 1 you going to see that either the vendor is reliable or not uske service after sales ya after sales services jo hain wo kis kisam ki hain then you're going to look at the types of goods and services it has and what it, whatever it provides then you're going to see if uh, that company is willing 
to demonstrate its uh, equipment or not, ability to modify the software. If you are acquiring software from somebody else or some other company or some other vendor, then you're going to see if that vendor is going to modify the software for you or they're going to offer the training uh, for that certain hardware or for that certain software. And you're also going to look at the evaluation by the other clients and the customers that are already using that hardware or software. So again, when uh, the choosing a vendor again becomes a whole big process for the uh, existing organization, especially if it wants to acquire something that is very expensive. If you have a very complex system, then choosing a vendor and choosing that equipment is a process itself. But if the company uh, wants to have a very cheap hardware, just ki itni zyada cost nahi aari, that is going to uh, um, sort of um, shake the budgeting of the company, then that means that you can simply acquire that hardware and you can start doing the working. Also, if, if the design, uh, the system development sees or the steering committee sees that if the design is a bit complex, then they can at this moment also involve other kind of personnel uh, to uh, design different alternates of the different so, uh, of the solution that was selected based on again uh, based on the fact that if a certain hardware is not very feasible for the organization then they can also move towards different alternate designs as well right so when you talk about this designing and when you're talking about this acquiring the hardware or the software from uh, the different vendors then there and like I said, it's a whole process, a whole procedure for doing so. Right, so this procedure that is a request for proposal. Basically, what is it? It's a document that specifies the required resources such as hardware and software in detail. And this kind of a document, RFP, that is given off to the different vendors. So that the uh, RFP basically consists of the company's overview the overview of the new system, how it's, how it's going to work, uski summary ogi, and it's going to list the different hardware specifications, the software specifications, data uh, based specifications that whatever is required. And this kind of document is sent off to different vendors so that they can select the product that they can offer and so that they also uh, mention the price and quote different prices of the different products that they have selected. Now creating this uh, RFP, a okay, professional RFP create karna, then again this is a very lengthy process. Like I said, gives me different cheese uh, or different uh, characteristics are hoti hai, different uh, equipment ke. So there are certain softwares that are available for the creation of the professional RFP. And but for the inexpensive hardware, for example, RFPs are not created. Inexpensive hardware in a topetni lumbi detail mean he jayangi company, they're only going to buy a certain hardware and they're going to start working on the implementation phase then. Right. So when the uh, the company sends the different kinds of uh, this RFP to the different kinds of vendors, to us RFP is related jo bi uh the vendor provide kar sakta hai, wo unki prices code karke phir company ko deta hai. So then uh, uh, so what the company now has is basically different kinds of vendors in ke to quotations hain, wo un uh, company ke paas aagi hain, ke this is um, what we can provide the, the organization with and these are the characteristics of our uh, equipment that meet your uh, characteristics so uh, and this is the price for a certain product that you want. So, this is the same documents that we have to do with the company and quotations in other words. Bolte. Right. Now, depending upon the financial situation of the company, that the uh, company has to um, hardware or software, lene, then either they can go for the purchasing of the uh, hardware or software, or they go for the leasing, or they go for the renting. Renting or leasing. May uh, advantages are there is no risk of obsolescence. That means that uh, their time period, uh, because kam hota hai, renting ka, leasing se thora kam time period hota hai. So the product unhe ne liya, uska ye nahi hota ki wo bus deplete ho jayega aur uska time period khatam ho jayega. Right? And then there is no initial investment. Initial investment bhi koi unhe bari nahi karni padti in the leasing and renting. And there is no long-term investment involved also in the leasing and renting. 
پرچیز ایک کے ایڈوانٹیج آن دا ہینڈ یہ ہوتے ہیں that you get the total control of the equipment yourself and you can sell that equipment anytime and it is a low cost option if you are going to use that equipment for a long period of years اگر آپ نے بہت زیادہ سال equipment کو use کرنا ہے then purchasing has its own benefits leasing and renting again depending on the situation the company has they can either go for renting or leasing now like I said that when uh, the uh, the RFPs are sent to the vendors and they come back with the quotations and uh, different kind of proposals of uh, what that those vendors uh, can provide the companies to skip on evaluation ka procedure on that evaluation means that you are basically if they are going to select the vendors and along with that you're selecting the design as well that comes up with the uh, because all this hardware and software and all the design go t together because the design is all about the technical aspects and the functional aspects of what the system is going to do so if your technical uh, requirement is not being fulfilled that means or you cannot sort of financially go for a technical solution then you th think of alternate solutions to overcome that problem right the evaluation may do uh, steps are that one is the preliminary evaluation second is the uh, final evaluation preliminary evaluation make your you basically looking at all the proposals that you have received from the different vendors and you are sort of uh, in the first look you're going to dismiss the unwanted proposals while investigating and comparing with the criteria that you've given to the company so if there are certain uh, products that are not coming up to the criteria you are instantly just dismissing those uh, proposals and also uh, at this point you are asking if you have selected the certain proposals or cer certain vendors you are going to ask the vendors for a formal presentation that they're going to present that um, product themselves and then you're going to also ask uh, them to list the number of uh, people who are already using their products for example uh, the list the clients or the companies or th the individuals that are using their project for example if they want to go for a certain projector then they're going to say that which which company is using this kind of projector then comes the final uh, evaluation just may final demonstration hoti hai. not just a simple presentation but a demonstration of how that product is actually working so it has to be very much close to the reality is uh, sisle may there is sometimes test data is also uh, involved real data use or data so that we can actually test uh, the product in the real environment and there's uh, certain other uh, factors are also checked if they meet the organizational um, objectives which uh, means the cost comparisons or the hardware performance check with the delivery dates check with them price flexibility if the vendor is ready for that backup training as well as maintenance is the vendor going to provide the maintenance so there are different aspects just uh, according to which your vendor is evaluated to provide a certain product right now uh, next part is a different techniques that can be used for evaluating these uh, mm, uh, to vendor proposals or they on co value it is that kia does it that sorry uh, POI near this is ROI that is return or investment either you go for this or TCO your yeah, customer uh, satisfaction that we've also talked about before in the earlier chapters as well so either the companies go for this apart from this they go for for group analysis cost benefit analysis benchmark tests and point evaluation as well group consensus consensus basically care that the development team sits together and look at the different proposals and discusses and talks and figures out that what would be the uh, good kind of uh, design or a good kind of a vendor that can be used so uh, in this uh, technique they can evaluate different reports uh, reports or evaluate the different kinds of screen uh, layouts as well cost benefit analysis basically lists the costs and the benefits of the post systems or any other kind of hardware and software vendor so there are different um, criteria jin ki cost or benefit ko uh, analyze kiya jata hai so benchmark test mein basically kya hota hai that there are different so uh, softwares and hardwares are evaluated for their performance that how well are they performing for example if there is a pair or uh, payroll software do a company uh, acquire career purchase career then they're going to 
uh, use the real uh, data for it and test that for, for example, 50 payroll checks. Either it's going kitne time mein ye wala software 50 payroll checks to hai, wo print out kar hai. So this is going to be one kind of demonstration of how uh, benchmark test hai. Ki agar isko is kisam ka test data diya jaye, to ye software ya hardware kis tarah perform karega. Then number uh, last one is the point evaluation. Point evaluation is uh, simply overcoming the drawbacks of the cost benefit analysis. Cost benefit may simply aap ek taraf cost rakhte hain aur ek taraf benefit rakhte hain and there is no variation in that. Uh, whereas in the point evaluation you simply give the weights to a certain criteria depending upon the priority of the system. This kism ka system required a organization goals jo uh, bhi required hai unke accordingly you are giving a certain weight to a certain criteria depending upon the priority of that certain criteria so usse kya hota hai ki aapke jo uh, weighted total nikalta hai usse that becomes even more clearer that what kind of system is required or what kind of uh, vendor is required or what kind of uh, design can, is useful right so so far what you have done here is that we have um, given this functional requirements of what is going to happen in the new information system and then we also looked at the how aspect by defining the different technical um, specifications of the different hardware and software and when you have the technical specification then you're going to say that a new system is going to do this and these functionalities cannot be done by the existing hardware and software and afterwards you go for the vendor that a certain company external company is going to provide you with a certain kind of a hardware and software. Uske alawa usme acquiring techniques aa jati hain, usme evaluation techniques aa jati hain. And when you have a certain kind of a design and when you have a certain kind of a vendor who is going to provide you uh, with a certain product, a certain hardware or certain software that is going to work for the benefit of your organization, then you're going to evaluate either it is really going to be good for the company or not, or either it's really good a good price or not or it has the same kind of benefits that the company needs or not so there are different evaluation techniques that are going to evaluate the product proposals that are given by the vendors now once it is all decided that this is a certain vendor and this is the um, uh, design that needs to be done at this point design specifications do I will freeze cut these out that this is the final design Right, and this is the final vendor we're going to go for. Coach companies do and that do not freeze the design specifications if there are certain changes that are required. They go through the process of RAD, that is the rapid application development, which are going so that they're going to refine that design to some extent as well. Right, once, for example, if they have uh, frozen those uh, uh, design specifications and they have decided on the vendor. Then comes the last point that is the final documentations. That is the contract that is done between the organization and the vendor. Contract mein kya, kya aara hai? It lists the details of what the contract is all about. That means kon kon se equipment that a uh, company is going to provide. Also deadlines of uh, uh, the pro providing that software, providing that hardware, the certain milestones that need to be achieved. And if there are certain other kind of penalties, for example, if there's a penalty for if the company is not able to provide uh, the organization with the, a certain product on the right time, then what the what is the organization going to do to them or do be penalties laga sakte wo mention ki kar di jati hai. Iske alawa, it also includes the RFP as well. Contract in the RFP included hota hai because that RFP contains all the details that were required by the vendor that is the system specifications to him who sari ki sari RFP mein likhti jati hain and in the end then a design report is generated design report again like I said again it's it's all about the technical report which consists of the functional requirements as well as the characteristics and specifications of the hardware and the software that is going to be used in the new system so basically aapka jo a uh, uh, final report by a design report mein, that is called the system specifications because it is going to tell you what are the uh, how is the system going to actually going to work and 
what are the different characteristics of the or specifications of the different hardware and software database telecommunications that are being used in the system so basically your design is a basic document that can start implementation start ho sakti hai. so this has all uh, that kind of documentation on which the implementation can start afterwards so it's a complete document that displays what is going to be done and how it's going to be done and what are the equipment that is going to be used to make that system working right so uh, so far what we have done so far is if I start back from the investigation phase the investigation may we looked at the uh, the planned projects they unko dekha project proposals are getting we looked at then you investigated those proposals by looking at the feasibility then we gave the feasibility analysis and then feasibility analysis go or detail with a kind of analysis phase and looked at the problem behind the problem the existing system its weaknesses and as well as the user requirements and then you gave different uh, solutions to the how to solve the problem after those solutions were presented as the systems uh, proposal then a design report was created designs may they were uh, started looking at the different kinds of um, specifications different kinds of functional uh, uh, requirements different kinds of uh, hardware software requirements as well as that ke jab aap, uh, jab user interact with the system say then how is the user going to interact with the system you're going to design those features as well and how is that design going to be more secure what are the security controls in the design what are the security measures that are going to be designed for the information system so again design is going to be a complete a step by step procedure of uh, what is going to happen in this information system with the help of the sequence diagram that can be done with the help of sequence diagram again ya jo aapka logical design hai wo kisi aur technique se bhi create kiya ja sakta hai right so afterwards when all of this has been uh, created and you have the hardware software specifications the uh, development team moves towards the acquisition of the different uh, equipment or the different products that are going to be used in the system so like i said before either the development has to be in house or the development needs to uh, move needs to be outsourced or you going to simply buy the uh, uh, certain kind of software to be used in the organization this again all happens here and afterwards जब डिसाइड हो गया यहाँ पे कि प्रोग्रामिंग खुद करनी है या प्रोग्रामिंग आउटसोर्स करनी है या कि इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम के लिए जो सॉफ्टवेयर है वो खरीदना है देन ऑल ऑफ दिस डिसीजन इज टेकन इन टू द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन फेज सो ऑल ऑफ हाउ दिस इज गोइंग टू हैपन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन फेज में ये सब कुछ किस तरह होता है वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दिस इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर So this is all for today. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about the implementation as well as the maintenance and review phase. Just me, I'm thinking that implementation जब शुरू होती है, then what are the methods of doing so, or किस तरह आप एक प्रोजेक्ट को किस किस लेवल के ऊपर इम्प्लीमेंट कर सकते हैं, so that उसका जो चेंज मैनेज जो होती है, वो किस तरह हो सकती है during the implementation as well as how you're going to review. the system performance as well as what are going to be the different maintenance uh, procedures required after everything has been done so this is all for today thank you very much